Hello everyone, it's been a while. For those of you that don't know, I was in a car accident back in the beginning of September and I was actually t-boned by a dump truck that ran a red light and I lost the use of the left side of my body. I dealt with horrible whiplash and I'm, I'm still I'm still healing. I've been told that this could take up to 18 months to heal but in light of that I am trying to focus on the positives. The use of my left arm is coming back. I have a lot more mobility in it which is great but I still can't really do a lot with pretty much anything from the elbow down. <laughs> um, I can't really pick up things with my left wrist. In light of that, I have decided that I want to try and sew a project really only using one arm. What I would like to make is a wrap cape coat. I saw this picture on Pinterest and I absolutely fell in love with the cape. So I'm going to be draping the majority of this. It should be pretty simple to make. I'm hoping it's simple. I just... I just really need to get back to sewing. But anyway, so the material I'm going to use is I have two and a half meters of this soft shell fabric that I actually got from Fabricland. It was in the discount section. So it's like regular like $35 a meter and I got it for $10 a meter. That's a $25 for a cape. I'm quite happy with that. So anyways, as I was saying, I've got two and a half meters of this. It should be more than enough to make the cape that I'm thinking of. And I just, I really hope it goes well. I think this is 60, 60 inches wide. It should be more than enough. I had it draped on my mannequin, just kind of playing around with it. I think it's going to be really cute. I do want to add pockets and a hood to this. So the hood, I'm going to be doing a three piece hood. So it's going to have a left and right side and then a piece down the center, because I think it'll be easier to kind of squeeze the material out. If I make it in three different pieces instead of just needing a large section. So uh, that is the plan for that. I really hope this comes out how I'm envisioning it. I'm thinking of possibly making the hood detachable and then I can just hide buttons underneath the collar to kind of attach the hood back in and whatever. Um, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I really hope this project doesn't take too long, but since this is my first project kind of coming back, from the accident, I am going to focus on being kind to myself because yeah, my body went through the ringer and is, is still uh, very much dealing with everything that happened in the accident. Finding the silver lining in this, I literally can say I know what it feels like to be hit by a dump truck. So with my rough sketch of what the pattern looks like, I need to create a full version. So let's get to it.
Starting on the front piece, I marked the placement of the pocket on the inside of the coat, and then I attached a 2 inch wide strip of interfacing over that area. Once this was done, I then repeated it on the opposite side. And then I remarked the pocket placement and used the kiss technique to transfer the chalk linings. And then I stitched just inside of that line, taking care to have an even amount of stitches on both the short ends of the rectangle. This helps to stabilize the pockets as well as transfer the markings to the right side of the fabric. Setting the front pieces aside, I then stitched up the ends of the pocket flaps. Trimmed the corners. Turned it right side out and top stitched it 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge. And then I repeated this on the second pocket flap. Working from the right side of the coat front, I marked the center of the pocket, and then I placed the pocket flap and the pocket pieces on either side of the line, carefully pinning them in place, making sure to stay just within the seam allowance. And this is because I don't want any extra holes in the water resistant fabric. Because what good is water resistant fabric with holes in it? Once both sides were pinned, I then stitched them in place. Next, I cut along the center line I had marked earlier, and then cut small triangles at the top and bottom, stopping right before the stitching lines. I then folded the pocket through the opening to the wrong side of the fabric and pressed everything open lightly. From there, I edge stitched the pocket lining to just the seam allowance to keep everything laying nicely when the pocket's finished. To finish the inside of the pocket, I stitched the small triangles to the lining and then stitched around the pocket pieces. The edges of the pockets can be left raw, but I decided off camera to serge around the pocket very carefully, just to keep it from fraying. Then finally, I carefully stitched over the top stitching on both ends of the pocket flaps to secure it in place. A tiny ladder stitch can also be added to the sides to hold down the sides of the flaps. Moving on, I stitched the coat ties with a half inch seam allowance, trimmed the corners, turned it right side out, and then gave them a press before pinning the ties to the back of the front coat panel. Once they were in place, I pinned the coat lining to the outer fabric. and then stitched around the edges, just leaving the neck and collarbone seam open. I then trimmed the corners and turned the coat right side out. For nice crisp edges, I carefully ironed the seams flat, taking care not to melt the fabric, because that can happen with a soft shell if you use too high of a heat. After that was done, I set it aside for later. 
for the cape portion of the coat, I simply pinned the back and side pieces together and stitched them with a half inch seam allowance. Now because I didn't have any seam tape to waterproof the seams, I opted for a welt top stitch seam with the seam allowance facing towards the back of the coat for a little extra protection. I then draped the coat over my mannequin to let it hang for a couple days to let the bias do its thing. For the lining of the cape, I wanted to add pockets to the front corners of the cape, so first I added a 1 inch strip of bias fabric around the opening of the pocket for a nice clean finish. Then I folded back the top and sides of the pocket and pinned them in place on the side lining pieces. With the pockets stitched in place, I then pinned the side and back lining pieces together and also draped them on my mannequin to let the bias stretching sort itself out. Up next is the collar. Now because I opted for a decorative under collar, I cut the under collar an eighth of an inch smaller than the upper collar to keep it from showing. This does make it slightly tricky to sew, but by keeping the upper collar on the bottom while sewing, the machine feed dogs help ease the pieces together. And to encourage the upper collar to roll over the under collar even more, I edge stitched the seam allowance to the under collar and then basted the neck edges together. At this point, I felt like the collar was still missing something, so I decided to top stitch around the collar off screen. I love how this looks right now. Getting pretty close to finishing this up. So what's next? I have to attach the lining to the back of the cape, attach the back cape to the front portion, put in the collar, and make the hood and then do the buttons and all the finishes. I'm really loving how it looks though and I'm really excited to see how it all comes out. So let's get back to work. Next up was attaching the cape to the front of the coat, which just involves stitching the little collarbone seam. I then finished that off with the welt top stitching seam, again pushing the seam allowance towards the back of the coat. Once both sides were attached, it was time for the lining. First, I sewed the lining along the collarbone seam. And then I stitched up the sides of the cape to the point where the seams met the collarbone seam. Sorry if that sounds a little confusing, it made more sense in my head. With the lining mostly attached, it's time for the collar. I lined up the balance points on the collar with the seams and pinned it in place. And then stitch the collar only to the outer fabric. Mm -hmm. 
I then flip the coat inside out and stitch the lining to the collar for a nice clean finish. To finish the bottom of the cape, I opted for a bagged out lining method because I really didn't know if I would physically be able to handle hand stitching everything. Also, I did leave an 8 inch opening in the lining so I could turn everything right side out again. And to make everything look really pretty, I finished under the collar and all the edges with a 3 8 inch top stitch. Once that was done, I added four buttonholes to the center front of the coat. Up next was a simple belt. I quickly sewed up the two inch wide belt Trimmed away the edges for a nice point. And then top stitched all the way around for a nice clean finish. And lastly added a nice simple belt buckle. Getting one step closer to the end of the coat, it is time to make the detachable hood. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this hood is a three-piece hood. And because the center part of the hood is straight and the sides are curved, it can make this part slightly annoying to sew. I thought I had all the bounce marks lined up correctly, but there were still some parts that caused me a little grief. And this is another place where I like to have the curved pattern on the bottom to help ease the piece together. My biggest tips for sewing something like this is to go slow and if you can, curve the fabric up around your hand as you sew it to help even more with the easing process. Once both sides were stitched, I used the welt top stitching once again, this time with the seam allowance pointing towards the top of the hood. I repeated the steps for the hood lining for going the welt seams, but I did add a facing to the lining that I somehow forgot to film. With both pieces done, it's time to add the lining to the hood. With the right sides together, I pin the edges together, leaving a 4 inch wide opening at the center back. I then stitch the pieces together with a half inch seam allowance. and then clipped and trimmed the curves. After turning it right side out, I then carefully pressed the edges and once again top stitched 3 8 of an inch away from the edge. And to make the hood removable, I added 5 buttonholes along the edge of the hood. For extra strength, I added small buttons to the inside of the coat for where each button would be attached, so that way the button thread would pull on the small button instead of the fabric of the coat.
I repeated the same step for the buttons down the center front of the coat as well. And just like that, the cape coat is done. Well, that is the end of the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this cape coat uh, making process. I am so happy with how this turned out. Now, on a more serious note, uh, you've probably seen the news, but BC right now is currently experiencing a devastating amount of flooding. Last week, we got the same amount of rain in one day that we usually get in the entire month of November. So that has caused some devastating floods in the area. I have friends and acquaintances who have farms in the flood zone and some of them have lost their homes and their farms and others are right on the edge of the flood zone and if we get any more rain, they could lose their house and farm too. I know the Red Cross is taking donations right now and I believe the federal and the provincial government is going to be matching any donations made to the Red Cross. If you don't want to donate to the Red Cross, I think there's a GoFundMe open um, for, for those who are dealing with the BC floods right now. I will link all that down below. Um, I, I don't want you to feel obligated to donate, but if, if you feel like you can, it would be extremely appreciated to those who are currently dealing with the floods right now. Uh, so that is everything for today's video. I hope you have a good day. And I'll see you next time. Bye.